There are so many fascinating characters on The Sopranos. Some we only see for one episode, others a few episodes, or maybe a season or two. But then there are those we meet at the very beginning, who stay all the way through until the end, or at least almost the end. That's what this video is about. Top 10 characters ranked by how much they changed from the least to the most, from the first episode all the way to the end, or almost the end, if they didn't quite make it to the finale. Marine Bucco is a civilian with integrity who wants nothing to do with organized crime. Well, what I'm trying to say is stop worrying about me. Really. I mean, we both made our choices. I'm fine with mine. We see this from the very first episode. Arthur, please, grow up. Does the mind not rebel in any possible scenario under which dentist is sending the Don of New Jersey first class on a Norwegian steamship? In terms of Charmaine and Artie, I kept them together because I think it's really from Charmaine's support and their marriage becoming stronger over time that Artie's able to become stronger over time as well. He's still the same goofy Artie at the end that we see at the beginning. And even in season six, we see that he still has wandering eyes, like with Martina. But there's no question in my mind that Artie loves Charmaine, that Charmaine loves Artie, and that that love has brought them through whatever obstacles they've faced. When we first meet him, he has a chip on his shoulder and feels like he's not being appreciated or recognized. You know, a simple way to go, Chris, on the Triborough Towers contract would have been nice. That's it. Which is ironic, considering that Christopher got so many chances that he wouldn't have had if it were not for the fact that he were Tony's quote-unquote nephew. I don't know, Tony. It's like just the fucking regularness of life is too fucking hard for me or something. And throughout the series, this feeling of being eased aside and shit on by Tony appears again and again. I don't know about you, but my friends have abandoned me. I've been totally fucking ostracized. Good. What are you doing here? Hey, hey, Gabriel says me down here for the gabagool. Silvio Dante is a loyal consigliere to Tony through and through. In the first season, he's a little bit more of a family man in the sense of being more involved with his daughter, his family at home, soccer games, etc. And the Dante! On a box for a goal! He remains loyal throughout the series, though of course, as the show gets darker, so does he. But the loyalty remains, and even all the way back in season one, he puts Polly in his place. Look, he's gonna be the new boss now. In name, in everything. Wish him born a Fortuna. Bert wasn't speaking for just himself. The guys are getting squeezed hard to sway them towards new management. I thought you'd be a part of it. Then he got an answer. I've been seeing a therapist. Oh my god. I think that's great. Carmella used to perhaps pretend that Tony was loyal and faithful. I want you to not cheat. I'm just being realistic. Because in a year, tops, we're going to have to accept a goo more. In terms of her overall state of mind, she's worried from the very beginning. Got a bad feeling. It's just a matter of time before God compensates me with outrage for my sins. I am worried all the time. So what, no fucking ZD now? Hey! I'm depressed. <laughs> you're not depressed. You're sad and you're angry because you did something stupid. It isn't fair. The world, don't you see it? It's like... America. This is still where people come to make it. It's a beautiful idea. And then what do they get? At the beginning, Mahaffey owes Hesh $250,000. The man does not have the money. We ran the man over with the car, T himself. The man has no wiggle room. He's bled dry. And at the beginning, we see that they're much friendlier. They're both on the same page. Tony actually really trusts Hesh and actually opens up to him. But then by the end, Tony's a lot darker. 
and it really puts a dark cloud over everything. I don't think I'm money. Suddenly, I'm the schmuck. Why does he need your money? Why? Cover his nut. Between his gambling and the lifestyle. Mr. Soprano? We meet Dr. Melfi in the first episode, and the last time we see her is in the Blue Comet, the penultimate episode of the series when she officially dumps Tony as a patient for good. Now, in terms of Dr. Melfi's moral compass as a whole, I think she has a good head on her shoulders, and she seeks to do no harm. We see that right from the start. But the problem is, her emotions and the influence of others gets in the way, and in fact leads her into some ethical issues when she breaks HIPAA laws by telling her therapist about a patient that she treats, and then letting that therapist and others in her circle influence her decision to stop treating Tony. Just as my son got out of the hospital for trying to kill himself? Since you are in crisis, I don't want to waste your time. Of course, she goes through a very, very traumatic situation in season three when she's raped. So I just wanted to make sure to add that in because that's certainly something that can change a person. All I know is daughters are better at taking care of their mothers than sons. You see, I never could please my mother. With Tony, we can see a literal transformation from the beginning to the end. He obviously got bigger, darker. The environment got darker. The world as we know it got darker on the show and in real life. But some things also stayed the same. Nowadays, no values. Guys today have no room for the penal experience. It's Carlo. Oh. Season one, Polly. You hear me? I want you to see it. Otherwise, all bets are off. You understand? You say it. You understand? I understand. To... You're a wormy cocksucker, you know that? No! In the beginning, particularly the first two seasons, Polly and Tony, and really Polly and the guys as a whole, have a much more friendly relationship. Commercial, isn't it? <laughs> You don't see Polly really going behind Tony's back. Certainly not in the way that he ended up doing with Johnny Sack multiple times by the end. There could be a change. Tony? Suffice to say, no matter what happens now or in the future, Carmine won't forget you. Miss Meadow! Meadow kind of goes on a roller coaster ride throughout the series. She's very cynical at first. Doesn't really buy any of what Tony's trying to sell. But by the end, she's pretty much bought into it. You know, there was a time, Ed, when the Italian people didn't have a lot of options. I mean, like Mario Cuomo. You know what really turned me? Seeing the way Italians are treated. This is such bullshit! Jesus Christ, some loyalty. But the truth is, they bring certain modes of conflict resolution from all the way back in the old country. From the poverty of the Mezzogiorno. Well... If I hadn't seen you dragged away all those times by the FBI, then I'd probably be a boring suburban doctor. Finally, number one, Junior Soprano. You may run North Jersey, but you don't run your Uncle Junior. We meet Junior in the pilot, and the last time we see him, is in the series finale, Made in America. Uh, my brother John was a man among men. This thing of ours. I was involved with that? You're my dad. You two ran North Jersey. We did? Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's nice. So to recap, in terms of characters from the pilot that stayed with us until the end, or nearly the end. Charmaine and Artie don't really change. 
besides their relationship getting stronger, in my opinion. Christopher gets a little bit older and a little bit wiser, but he still is fundamentally the same person. Life is hard for him in the beginning, and it's hard for him at the end. Now, Sale, of course, also has physical changes like Tony, and he's more serious later on, but so is everything else. Carmela's gotten more and more worried as the series goes on, as more people die, as more things happen in the world that add to her insecurity. But, again, she's been worried since the very beginning. AJ also has physical changes as he goes through puberty and his teenage years. But he's also depressed at the beginning, trying to find himself. And also depressed at the end, trying to find himself. With Hesh, it's a warmer relationship. But then by the end, their relationship is almost completely crumbled. And I think that takes a real toll on Hesh. With Dr. Melfi, of course, very first episode, she opens her doors to Tony. And the last episode that we see her in, shuts the door in his face. No more interest in talking to him. And you could debate on whether or not it should have even gotten that far to begin with. Whether she should have just dumped him as a patient right in season one. Polly's always been in it for Polly. But he seemed to defer a lot more to Tony at the beginning, before they then had Polly taking more of this, uh, snaky vibe. Meadow, of course, physical changes, but also it's more like a back and forth, kind of roller coaster ride. And then with Junior, of course, it's heartbreaking, but because of his legal perils and his dementia, he's very, very different at the end. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.